In this video, I'll be replacing the spark plug cables on a naturally aspirated Porsche 944, as well as demonstrating some common methods for inspecting their condition. Some signs that you may have failing ignition cables include engine misfires or incomplete combustion, engine hesitation or rough idling, the engine running rich with black smoke visible from the exhaust, hard start and no start conditions, a noticeable decrease in fuel economy, as well as visible damage to the wire insulation. Spark plug cables, also known as ignition cables or high tension leads, are wearable items that should be factored into a regular maintenance schedule on the 944. Prolonged exposure to engine heat and vibrations can cause the silicone rubber insulation to break down over time, so if you're experiencing any of the aforementioned issues, it's probably a good time to inspect the car's ignition cables. As we're checking the spark plug wires for visible damage, we're looking for any signs of melting, cracking, or abrasions in the wire insulation as well as the rubber boots. Cuts or breaks in the insulation can allow the voltage to jump to ground rather than jumping the gap at the end of the spark plug, which will diminish engine performance, and so those are signs that the plug wire should be replaced. It's a good idea to run the full length of each cable, twisting and flexing the material to check all surfaces, where you may need to remove them from their plastic retaining clips to get a clear view. Look out for any areas where the cables or boots may be resting against metal engine components, as burns and abrasions are more likely in those cases. In addition to visual inspections, there are a variety of ignition tester tools that can be used to test for no spark conditions. Most of these tools have a test lead that resembles the top of a spark plug and a clip that attaches to a metal grounding point. With one of the spark plug boots connected to the test lead and the grounding clip attached to a point in the engine, the tool can be adjusted to the desired test specification. From here, the engine can be started to assess the spark condition, repeating the test across all four ignition cables. Some of these tools also have test settings to gauge the voltage output, where the spark gap is increased to determine the intensity of the spark for each lead, and any observed variations in intensity would warrant further inspection or replacement of the affected ignition components. An ohm meter can also be used to perform some resistance tests to assess the internal condition of the leads. To do this, both ends of each cable should be disconnected from the distributor cap and the spark plug by carefully twisting and pulling up on the boots. With the boot ends exposed, the test leads on the ohm meter can be applied at a setting of 20,000 ohms to take a reading. Here, the manufacturer specifications should be referenced for your specific cables to determine whether or not they fall within spec. Generally speaking, spark plug cable resistance for spiro core or mag wiring is measured in ohms per foot, where a longer cable should display a higher resistance than a shorter one. But in the case of European ignition systems, resistorized plug ends are used to achieve a specific resistance value on each lead. To prevent radio frequency noise from interfering with the onboard electronic equipment on the 944, as well as to maximize fuel efficiency and engine power, the Bosch Motronic system requires a resistance of 3000 ohms per lead. Here's a list of the resistance specifications by manufacturer for some of the most common cable sets on the market today. As you can see, the Baru, Carlin, and Euro cables feature the original equipment resistorized plug ends, so they should all measure around 3000 ohms per lead. The Cluet and MagnaCore cables read in ohms per foot, so you'll need to measure each cable in feet and multiply that value by the ohms per foot designation to arrive at the specification for each cable. When measuring resistance on a set of European ignition cables for the 944, each lead should have the exact same resistance of about 3000 ohms, plus or minus 10% of that value to indicate a healthy cable. So these Bosch Ultra Premium cables I pulled from the car should all measure between 2700 and 3300 ohms. Measurements in excess of plus or minus 20% of 3000 ohms would warrant replacement as being out of threshold, which would be less than 2400 ohms or greater than 3600 ohms. As for this set of cables, lead 1 measured in at 2990 ohms, lead 2 was 2950 ohms, lead 3 was 2630 ohms, and lead 4 was 2940 ohms. Since this set of cables is now well over 10 years old by all accounts, and the measurement on the third lead was a little concerning, I've got a new set of Baru cables here to replace them with. A new set of ignition cables will also include a new coil wire that connects the ignition coil to the distributor cap. If your coil still has the protective cover in place, you'll first need to remove the plastic cover from the top of the ignition coil, pull the output plug wire straight off the cap, and then the new cable can be installed and routed over to the center connection on the distributor. The spark plug cables can now be installed in the reverse of removal, where they route from shortest to longest across cylinders 1 through 4 from front to back. The ignition sequence or firing order on the 944 is listed on the camshaft assembly as 1342, and that corresponds to the distributor cap connection starting at the lower right corner in a clockwise direction as 1, 3, 4, and 2. When the cables are properly routed on a later car like this one here, the wire should pass under the fuel pressure damper and through the gap above the high pressure fuel line, which can be done without removing any of the fuel system components. It just requires a little maneuvering and it helps to pass the smaller plug end through the opening when routing the cables. 
When installing the plug ends, make sure they're fully seated by applying consistent downward pressure on the connections, and it's good practice to double check the spark plug connections, as they sometimes have the tendency to appear fully seated when in fact they're not. Once everything is in position, the wires can be pressed into the plastic retaining clips on the fuel reel, which helps prevent future abrasion and burn damage to the insulation. With everything reinstalled, you can go ahead and start the engine and check for normal operation, assess the repair, and confirm the ignition issues have been resolved.